All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to another Slimy Sekai Memories video. So today I have for you um, kind of my own, uh, I guess, tier list for all the available characters in the game. Um, this includes free to play, uh, protector and battle units. Um, now, before anything, I just want to say that this is all my own opinion. Um, obviously, with tier lists, like, sometimes tier lists are are accurate. Sometimes, you know, like, they're only reflective of that specific moment in time. Um, things can change, you know. Um, but yeah, this is just uh, my own opinion. I want to stress that. Um, if... You know, you see something or like see a placement that you don't that you think should be different, then just you know, let me know down below in the comments, and then um, uh, I, I want to read it. That's why I want to know um, more about people's thoughts and such. Yeah, um, I know I've 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 already I've made some in the past, but I've never made a video about it. Um, so this might be a bit long, considering I'm gonna have to explain everything. But let's start with battle units. So this is my current thought process on battle units. Um, this is how I decide to rank it. And I know it's a bit broad, but um, I'll just do a quick explanation as to how these are, how I've um, categorized it, I guess, in my brain. So obviously up here, you see that Hero has her own category. And the reason I put her in her own category is because I feel like for most content, like she's just usable everywhere. Um, even in like stages where maybe you don't like need to use her, um, you like you can always just, she'll always have a spot, right? Um, she's never not useful except for maybe very specific strategies. Um, where you just like she's not needed so it's like okay i just don't need her for now but for a lot of cases and in a lot of game modes she's just useful um her extra turn i'll, I'll, pull, I'll pull her up where is she where are you where are you um the fact that she gives you an extra turn and also gives you that 20 percent protection gauge increase 20 percent is um like definitely not bad um it's obviously not like 50 percent or something like that but it's still a lot also, the crit rate is just always useful. Um, she's just a really, really, really good support unit, in my opinion. Um, and that's why I put her on her, in her own category. So, I think I think it's pretty self-explanatory. But next, we have S. Um, S, I just think, are like the top best units in the game. Um, because they are, like, very flexible. You can use them in a lot of different teams. Um, and also, you can, you know like like they excel in their own teams and you can use them they work outside of that uh especially like the these three that i have i have space milum water hinata and light shion um because where they work they work extremely well now light shion is probably the um weakest i would say in terms of flexibility out of the three just because she is reliant on that pierce rate um she worked like the light 2.0 team does really really well but outside of that she might suffer a bit because you know that she she can't uh she doesn't have the pierce rate to guarantee or at least almost guarantee um the pierce buff that she's giving herself with her attack buff right so that's why she i think is the like weakest in, out of all of them for adaptability but i mean you know s tier they're the best um and they can, you know, they're very flexible and all that. Next we have A. Um, they are really good units. Um, either they work really well with their team or they're good on their own, but they just maybe fall a little short of the S tier in terms of um, maybe damage output, um, supporting capabilities, or um, just flexibility, right? Like how often you're using them, um, whether there are other characters and stuff like that. So I just think A is like still really good, like not saying that people in A are like a lot worse than S. I think they're really good, but there's just like one or two small things that don't make them reach the S tier. 
Next we have B. Um, these units are decent. Like they're not bad. Obviously not as good as the people in the S and A tier. Um, they're still solid. Like they do serve a purpose. Um, you can use them. Um, maybe you know you don't have an option because you don't have the other units, so you can use these units, right? Um, for example, if you don't have Wind Diablo, you can still use Hakuro as a DPS. He's not bad. Um, obviously, they have their own shortcomings. They're not the best in the game, but they're definitely not the worst, right? You can still use them to some extent. Um, they serve a purpose, whether it be support, uh, traits, um, damage, all that stuff, um, orb changing. Uh, so yeah, they're all like really good. Uh, they're all good, but they're not like super, super good, right? Next we have C. Um, these are just, uh, they're, they're not obviously, they're not the worst, right? They're not the worst in the game. They do have some niche uses or they do have uses, but there are other units that do better, that do it better than them, right? Like, it's not like they'll never have a spot, but they'll probably be like on the back burner in your mind um, for units to use, um, whether it be just because their skills are a bit lacking or their damage is lacking or they're just other units that serve their job and just do it way better than they do. Um, and then they can, um, but yeah, like they're still usable, obviously, but, um, probably not at the forefront or most definitely not at the forefront of who you'd want to use. And lastly, we have the D tier. These units, um, I think all the units in the game are usable to some extent. However, the units in the D tier are very, very niche or they're just really weak um in terms of what they bring to the table uh you can use them you know if you need to use them you can use them or very specific strategies you can use them um or like let's say on the fire team right there's still only fire 1.0 so like if you need to use she's way you can use she's way right and i just think overall in comparison to the rest of the units in the game um they lack a bit of something whatever they're bringing to the table and they're just you could just use other units right obviously you have no choice and you're gonna have to use them but if you do have other choices you're probably not using any of these characters so now that we have that out of the way um where would i be ranking the dark 2.0 units so i'm just gonna say i think dark 2.0 overall now is one of the better teams in the game obviously um i think it is in the, the higher half of the current six 2.0 metas that have come out so far um but let's start with um dark millum so dark millum we go to her she has her own soul combos damage buff which is not just for herself it's for everyone on the team and she increases her own attack by one turn and then she has the special orb change she has a single target alt which goes up to 480 percent i believe um and her trait gives you skill points um so I think that Milum, I think I think that Milum is really good. I really like her. Um, I you can use her outside of her own teams, um, and maybe I don't think she hits as hard as like Water Hinot. She doesn't have the same damage scaling, maybe um, like on her own. I think, but. She does do a lot of damage, so I think I'm just going to put her in S tier. Um, just the amount of damage she can output, especially on the dark team. Um, she is basically almost... Or maybe maybe she's not she's not a better water student. I'd say they're almost on the same level. But I think Milum can just do more damage than Shuna can. Um, she does have the special orb change. And she works really well on the dark team. Um... I think she's an S tier, but like maybe just barely. Um, if you were to say, oh, I think she's an A tier, I would definitely see it, you know? Um, I just think like she's really good. I do like using her a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna put her up there because I think she's really good. Um, but if you were to say, hey, maybe she's not as good as you claim that she is, but you know, like maybe she'd be an A tier, then I w it's not like, a, it's not a statement that I would be like, Oh my god, how could you think that, you know? Um, so yeah, 
that's I think she's an S tier, but that can maybe be a, a bit flexible. Next, we have Dark Rimuru. Now, just like how Hero had the special special skill for half anniversary, Dark Rimuru brought the same thing to the table. Um, funny enough, they do have they both share the crit rate skill. Um, Except his uh, gives everyone crit rate and it increases Dark Allies crit damage by 40%, which is really good. And his unique sort of skill um, that we've never seen before is a skill where for two turns he'll give himself this uh, basically, it's, I guess you could call it a buff, but it's more like a status. Um, where if the first ult that would be used by the opponent just gets eaten up by him, and then he fully charges his own ultimate by 100%. Um, and then he increases all souls skill point increase until the end of battle by 10%. So, you can only use it once, once per battle. So I think it's a very powerful skill in certain cases. Um, we've seen like in Valor Cup and stuff like that, that it can be very useful. Um, because let's say you can build up his ult, you can activate that skill, you can ult, do a decent amount of damage, eat their ultimate and then use it again and, you know, maybe wipe them out. Um, We've seen in Tempered Edge, it can be very useful because you just, you know, in certain cases where, oh, you're going to use Rimuru for damage, you can just use his skill to eat an ultimate, and you don't have to worry about bringing him out onto the field and, like, building up his ultimate as well. Like, in, if you were if you were doing, like, a turn limit Heroes Jubilee, um, at some point, if they throw their ultimate, you just use that skill, uh, eat their ultimate, set him in the back, and that's it. Because you're only really going to bring him out, um if someone's about to die, or if uh, you're planning to ult and nuke that turn. So I think he's really good. Um, I don't think, or he has an AoE ultimate, but I don't think he's on the same level as the S tier units. I think he's very good. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put him in A tier. Uh, these aren't numbered, by the way. I just wanna say that now. I should have said it earlier. Uh, maybe I'll clip this earlier to the beginning of the video, but these are not numbered. Um, this is not in a numbered order, so if you're thinking, oh, why are you ranking Mulan as the top of A? I'm not. I just threw all the pictures in. Um, so these aren't are not in a numbered order. But yeah, I think Rimuru is sitting comfortably in A tier. He's very good, um, but I think this unique skill is not as useful as something like Hero, right? He's not in his own tier. Um, he can still still do good damage, but the fact that he has an AoE alt means that his damage potential is kind of capped to a certain extent, unlike Milam. So I think yeah, I think he's really good, um, but he's not maybe S tier level. So next we have Shinsha, Dark Shinsha, who came out um, almost a week ago or almost two weeks ago. Um, she has a pretty um, good skill for attack for dark attack. Um, it's usually 50% until uh, after 8 turns, it becomes 70%, and she decreases all targets dark resistance by 10% for one turn, when you use it. And it costs 80 skill points. And then her second skill, Great Sage Processing, she decreases all targets crit resistance until the end of battle by 10%, which is unlimited, so it can build up infinitely, and then you increase also skill point increase until the end of battle by 5%, up to a max of 100%, but it's also in collaboration with, um, you know, with Milam's uh, sort of thing, I think, as well. I think they all stack together, if I'm not wrong, or unless it's its own separate um, counter, then, yeah. Uh, actually, no, it, it's its own thing, sorry, because it's all souls skill point, um, whereas Milam's is uh, the green orb specifically. But I think, and she has a single target ult, and it decreases um, single target crit resistance by 5%. So I think Shinsha it's definitely not a bad unit, um, but I think the thing that limits her a lot is the fact that she's only for the dark team. Um, if you're not using her on the dark team, this is basically useless because you know no one's on the dark of the dark element. And this one is okay, but it only really works well with Veldora um, or someone who decreases skill point, um, like the skill skill cost. Uh, like Veldora, Dark Rimuru, Benimaru, Soka, those types of protectors. Um, so 
She can do a decent damage, but you're obviously not using her for damage, and outside of the dark team, you're not really using her. So I'm gonna put her in B. Um, maybe, maybe I should just put him at the end here. Um, I'm gonna put her in B because she does. She is a great support for the dark team, but outside of that, you're never gonna use her on another team. I can't really see any point in using her unless they come up with like dual elements, which I kind of doubt they'll do. But yeah, she works really well on the dark team, but you're not using her outside of that. So next we have Dark Diablo. This, or he came out like a week ago. Um, he, at his first skill, he increases his own attack by 25% for two turns. And he increases his own secret skill gauge by 25% for 25 skill points. And then he also has the orange to green orb change, um, which also buffs full of skills, skill point increase until the end of battle by 5% up to a max of 100. So, I think this Dark Diablo is okay. Um, he does have the orb change, which is nice. Um, this is kind of, eh. Like, in Valor Cup and such, it can work because it's an easier, it's an easy way to get your ultimate pretty fast. Um, I just think overall he's not bad i guess but he just doesn't really have a place um for one he's physical which the dark 2.0 team is basically all magic um so he's automatically losing out on a pretty decent amount of damage um this is kind of it's his own self-sustaining buff but it's also a little bit awkward because he's not really bringing anything to the team other than the orb change and even then you could maybe just use someone else um, his, he has an AoE alt, which is okay, but, I mean, you're not really gonna use him for damage. Um, maybe for Valor Cup, I've used him in Valor Cup some, and he works okay. Um, not bad. But, yeah, I think, overall, he's just okay. Um, on the Dark Team, he works okay, but, I mean, you could realistically just use anyone else, like Ranga who's magic, you can use Aaron, who's magic, and also has, they both have the orb change. Um, so, it, he's just awkward, because he doesn't have a specific role, because he's buffing himself by a little bit for attack and such, um, but he's also, like, orb changing, so he's not support, but he's also not really a damage dealer, so, I think I will put him, I was having a, a bit of a hard time with this one, I'm gonna put him in C tier, just because there are other units you can use, and I think he's not bad, but he's just very awkward at the moment. Maybe if we get Dark 3.0, um, like some point in the future, Dark 3.0, and they're physical, maybe you could use him. Um, but I think on the current Dark 2.0 team, he's just a bit awkward. Um, but that's just me. So yeah, this is the battle unit uh, tier list my current opinion at the moment we put dark millum in s tier dark Rimuru in a tier dark chincha in b tier and dark diablo in c tier um i do i want to stress again this isn't numbered or anything like that these are just i just threw the pictures up in there and that this is the order it turned out in um but yeah with that out of the way let's go into protection characters so protection, or I think uh, protection characters, this is the current tier list that I have um, for overall. Now, I do want to say that Veldora and Milum, I wasn't really sure how to put them because they are really good, but it's also hard to stack them up against characters because in a short battle, they could be very weak, but in a long battle, they could be the best, right? So, I wasn't sure whether to just leave them in S tier, or if to just, I don't know, create a new one that is, like, stacking, I guess. Um, I could do that as well. Maybe drop this down. Um, but this is, I don't want to copy Joker's tier list, so, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll leave it like this, um, for now, until later on, but I feel like... It, it's hard to judge them based on the rest of the units because they're so different. Um, but this is the current 
uh, iteration of my tier list, I guess. So we have Vodora and Milum. If I were to rank them specifically, I would put them... Um, I, I think I'd change it a little bit. I think I'd put Milum in S tier, maybe Vodora in A tier. Um, maybe just because of the way their teams are set up. Um, I feel like Milum's Water 2.0 team works super well. Um, they have so many ways of getting blue orbs and just getting a lot of skill points, a lot of damage, getting many multiple or many Milum gauge ult Milum protection gauges. Oh my god. Um But I mean Veldora Space 1.0 is definitely not like space as a team is not bad. Um I just think that uh the fact that he only buffs skill point increase um it's still good, but then it also makes it a little bit harder to get Fildora stacks in some cases. Um, but I still think, you know, he's he's very good. So if I were to put them not in that category, this is where I'd leave it. But I'm just going to throw them up there for now. So um, I will explain this a little bit. S tier, obviously these two, S tier is like the best in the game. A tier is like they're, they're really good, but they're not completely usable everywhere um they do have a lot of uses they're very good but may they're either not as good or just not as flexible um b tier is like they're okay they're not bad definitely not bad um maybe there are other options to use other than them um but if you know you have to use them or if you can if you like they're your only choice then like they're still good right c tier is like okay um they still do bring something to the table, like they're not completely useless, um, but there are other, other, like you will use them in certain cases where the other ones are blocked off. For example, Earth Mini Maru and Earth Hakuro, right? If it's a stage where orange orbs are basically useless, then you'd want to use Earth Mini Maru. <clears throat> but um, they're not the worst, but they're definitely not the best. And then D tier is just like, they are very one-dimensional, or they don't really do anything. Um, you can use them, but a lot of cases you just use the other protectors of the team. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically it. Um, these are not numbered again as well, so this is what I have. Now we have Dark Veldora. Um, Dark Veldora, I think is really good if you can get him like ramping if you can ramp him up right um he increases his uh all allies magic attack by 10 percent for one turn but it increases by five percent every time you use a skill um from the start of battle to the end of turn eight up to a max of 70 percent so i think he's really good um you can use him in valor flip and stuff and the dark team works really well where you can just keep we're using skills, um, especially orb changes, and then build up a lot of skill points with the way the team works, and then um, use your big damage skills, use his buff with that 70% magic attack buff, and then obliterate everyone. Um, the only like thing is that he doesn't work well, obviously, with physical teams, so his sort of um, maneuverability, I guess, uh, can be... Or flexibility can be a bit jeopardized um like Hakuro for example you can use like Hinata on his team because he's not directly buffing like a specific type of attack whereas Veldora you it maybe suck to use like Shion for example if you need to because he is only buffing magic attack so she's not getting anything from it even with that said um, I'm comfortable with putting him in S tier because I feel like this team, the Dark 2.0 team, works really well. Um, that, uh, the, the Dark team works really well. Um, you know, his skills are really good. Um, you can do so much damage with this team. You can clear a lot of content with this team. Um, and yeah, I just I feel comfortable putting him up there. Um, again, this is going to be the same thing as Dark Millum, where where if you if some people were to be like, hey, I think he's maybe A tier because 
in certain situations he might not be the greatest compared to Shizue and Hakuro. I definitely would not I would not be like you're wrong or something. I I definitely understand because there are certain cases where he will just fall short. Um but I think overall as a unit and such, he is still really good. Um just what he brings to the table, how well he can augment his team and everything. I think he works well and I'm comfortable putting him in S tier. But I would also be comfortable putting him in A tier. Now one thing um I think some people will ask is why is Dark Rain Ruin B? The only reason I have him up there is because he now has some usage in Valor Cup. Um I think he works really well in Valor Cup and he is okay, I think. I don't think he's the worst in the game overall. Um, he definitely has some uses. I think he's a bit underrated. Um, I'll, if you guys want, I will I can do a showcase video on him and just general overall um, gameplay. But I think he's a bit underrated. Um, and also, his outfit looks sick. You know, how can you not use Dark Remu? But yeah, this is just my protection list. Um, I'll do this and then I guess that, you know, if I were to use the stacking units in uh, uh, a letter sort of ranking, um, but I will just put them up there for now. And lastly, we have the free to play units. So this is my free to play unit tier list, um, just where I'm comfortable putting them. Um, things may have shifted a little bit from the one that I did almost a month ago, I think. Um, or like maybe two months ago, I think it's when Misery came out. But yeah, this is my free to play unit tier list. Obviously, Geld and Reamer are in S tier because just how much orb maneuverability they give to their team. Um, A tier, they're they're good. They're still good. Um, B tier is they're not bad. They have uses, but they're not the worst. Um, C tier is like. Eh, they have some uses occasionally, but you might not use them really. And then D tier is like, okay, they just kind of suck. Um, I know someone was talking about Wind Xion, how uh, she could potentially be higher on this list. Um, and while I do kind of understand that uh, she is useful to some extent at the beginning of the game, I think you'll notice that as you move into other content, you'll realize that she really just does not bring much to the table. Um, I'll, pro I'll pull up her, her stats really quickly and she like if you look at her attack stat right it's pretty bad um she has this health heal which is okay um as she increases soul of skills damage um and she gives everyone pierce resistance but she's aoe for 260 percent it's pretty low um diablos is 295 right um but her thing is a bit low um she has the self heal which is okay but she's not bringing any damage. Um, Pierce resistance is very situational sometimes um, because if they're not doing any Pierce, then this skill basically is useless. Um, so yeah, uh, I think she's just not that great in my opinion. But Isis. Now, where does Isis belong on the tier list? Um, I think she's really good. Um, I really like using her on the dark team especially. Um, the more... I've used like skills like this where they just increase um, overall gauge increase for specific orbs um, for a few turns. Um, the more I enjoy it, the more I think it's really fun. Um, she does have an orb change on like Misery, so it makes her able to run and use the other skills more smoothly, flushes out the team a bit more. Um, she does decrease Soul of Secrets um, secret skill gauge by 50% for three turns, which kind of suck because if you get screwed with orange orbs then you're not really getting much from them but i think in comparison to what you're getting overall i think isis um is really good she does have a single target alt um which is not bad she can do decent damage so i think i'm oh i'm comfortable with putting her in s tier um she's really good um uh, uh, maybe not on the same level as rimuru but I still think she's very worthy of being in the S tier. She's still really good. Um, yeah, I just really like using her, especially on the dark team. She's very fun. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, I'll show the um, final results of the tier lists. 
and yeah that's pretty much it uh thank you all for watching um if you're still watching to the end then don't forget to um hit that like button down below and also hit that subscribe button if you're um, new to the channel or if you haven't already um i'd really appreciate it um and yeah let me know down below your thoughts your opinions um what you guys think if i'm right or wrong um your opinions i want to hear all of it um yeah thank you all for watching and i'll see you all in the next one peace